Hi everyone, welcome back to the Civray Zim Move. If you was watching the last video, you'll know that we did a demo of the head. Now my son thought that that was hilarious and I've decided that we're going to get him in on the action a little bit this time so you may see a little bit of a guest appearance from him later. What we're going to be doing this time is taking a look at the chest. You can see I've got all the chest pieces on here now. We'll start by heading over to the inmove.fr website and checking out the different options we have for the chest because you do get some choices. We'll then get all of those parts printed out and fitted onto the robot. And finally we'll have a quick look at this PIR sensor that's mounted in the centre of the chest. We'll have a little My Robot Lab script and we'll just try that out and have a little bit of a demo. So let's head on over to the inmove.fr website. So here we are on the inmove.fr website and where we want to go to is in the gallery menu we want to go to the STL parts library. And from there we want to select the chest and let's just go over these parts. So the first thing we've got here is bottom chest. Now we've got bottom chest sonic or just bottom chest and you can see that one has got the holes in it here for the sonic ultrasonic sensor and the other one is just blank. Now I believe the ultrasonic sensor is a little bit experimental at this stage so I'm going to be ignoring that for now and we're just going to go with the solid ones the simple bottom chest. Next we've got chest left and chest right, we're going to need both of those. We'll need the chest top attach and the chest top. Now next we've got in M left and in M right. Um, but we've got two versions of each. You can see we've got one here with the raised lettering. And we've got another version here with the recessed lettering, which they call hollow. So it's with the letters raised out or the letters uh, depressed in. And also, if we take a look down the bottom, we've got this typo.stl, uh, which is the inmove lettering separately. So we could either print the uh, raised version or we can print the hollow version. Or we could also got a third option of going for the hollow version, but with this additional separate lettering. Now what that gives us the option of doing, if we go with the separate lettering, um, we can print the main part in one colour and produce the lettering in a different colour. So we could do the main part in white and the lettering in black or vice versa. So I think what I'm going to do is go with the hollow version and then I can decide later whether I'm going to use the additional lettering or not. So then we'll also need the, the right version of the, the hollow. Next we've got middle chest. Now again we've got another choice here. We've got one with the hole for the PIR sensor and one that's solid. Now I think the PIR sensor is quite a, a simple um, addition to add. So I um, thought that might be interesting to look at that. So I'm going to go with the PIR version. Now next we've got the side rib covers. Now I didn't actually know that these existed until I started to look through here. So I'm going to print those out as well and take a look at those. And I'll also download the lettering but I don't know if I'll use it or not. And then finally we've got this under connect. So I'm just going to leave that for another day. So we'll get these downloaded and printed out and we'll take a look at them. So these are all the parts printed out. 
they're all the parts that we're going to be fitting today. I'll go over them one by one and try and remember their names. These two parts here are the chest top and then we've got the chest top attach. We've got chest right, in M right, in M left and chest left. And then bottom chest right, chest middle PIR and bottom chest left. And then over at the sides here, we've got the side rib covers. One on each side, not really part of the chest, but I thought I'd get them fitted, get them done as part of this video. And then you can see down the bottom here, we've got the Adafruit PIR sensor. Um, these cost about £19 off of Amazon. So I've been taking a look at all the parts and where they fit on the chest and I'm not 100% certain of the best order to fit them in so we may have to jump around a little bit. But I thought I'd start with um, these quite chunky bits at the bottom. They're uh, bottom, bottom right chest and bottom left chest. I, I can't remember the names. Um, they've got these two uh, pins sticking out at the back um, and they need to fit into these two holes here. You've actually got a little arrangement here of four holes and it's the top two that we're going to be fitting into. You can see there's a screw hole there which is uh, where the screw will actually attach. But the first challenge is going to be uh, getting them to fit into these uh, holes, these rectangular holes here. So I've got to do a bit of filing um, around these pins and in the holes to try and get them to fit in there. So we've got the first one in, it looks like it's quite tight against the back. I didn't have to do too much filing, did have to do a little bit though. Um, the screws I'm using are self-tapping screws, uh, just think plated ones. Black probably would be nicer but this is all I've got at the moment. They are number four by one inch long, so I think that's 2.9 millimetres by 25.4 millimetres in metric. Um, I don't know if I'll use these all over, uh, we'll have to sort of see as we go along. So that one's in, so I'll move on to the other side. And that's the second one in. Uh, the only thing I will say here is that I didn't glue them, so I've just press fitted them in and pushed the screw through them. And just to mention not to over tighten the screws, because I think you could quite easily uh, sort of wring the plastic off and strip the threads so don't don't over tighten these screws i can just feel through the back there that one inch screw is just poking through the other side but that's fine i believe yeah so i think what we'll do next we'll get these rib covers fitted because i've already looked at them and they are uh, they were a little confusing to start with but once you figure out how they go they are actually really easy to fit Okay, so basically they go in with the taller piece at the front. These two clips at the back here go into these two rectangular holes here and here. And then we just squash the front two clips in. And that's in, easy as that. So we'll get the other side in. Get the back in and then just push these front clips in. And that's the second one in. Okay. Right, so before I go any further, I'm going to make up a little cable for our PIR sensor. I've done one end here and I'll just show you how I'm doing the other end. So I first just uh, stripped the wires back a bit, or separated them a bit I should say, and then I'll strip them. Give them a little twist. Uh, 
And then we've got these little connectors to put on the end. We'll just break one off. Now what I do is I pop them into the crimper. And then just push the wire down into the crimper. And then we have this little plastic shroud. We just push them down into there. We just need to make sure that the sides with the metal clips on point towards these holes that are in the shroud. They can be quite tricky to get in there. So what I usually do is just give them a little push down with a very small precision screwdriver until I hear a click. And that's that. We've got a nice little cable for the PIR sensor. Right, so what I'm going to do is glue in the PIR sensor with hot melt glue. Um, there are two fixing holes in the sensor, but there's no holes in the um, 3D printed part. So I'm just going to go with hot melt glue. And I'm going to glue it so that the uh, power connectors are going to be at the top of the robot. So if we just put it in position and then just pop a little bit of glue in to hold it. Just let that cool a bit. The hole is actually slightly too big for the sensor, but I'll try and position it in the middle and hope that the glue goes off and keeps it there. So that's in there, it should set fairly quickly. Aha, got it. Oops, oh, these are tough. Okay, hopefully you can see the blue wire coming through there. We went through that diamond shaped hole at the front and then we're going through the rectangular hole down there in the torso and then we're coming out through this hole here. Uh, I haven't got the Arduino set up for this yet but that should be able to reach to plug anywhere on the Arduino where we decide to fit a header. So I've actually got a dark blue uh, indicator on the ribbon cable that I've used so I'm going to make that the ground so the dark blue is the ground. I've plugged the header on there um, and I will just mention there is a little jumper back here and I believe that's for the re-trigger. I don't fully understand what the re-trigger is, but um, I guess we'll get into that when we start looking at the software. And I believe it's in the correct position to have the jumper positioned sort of away from us as we're looking at it. So it's right in the corner of the board. So I believe that jumper is correct. We've got the, the uh, signal cable plugged in. That is power and signal. 
Now the chest middle doesn't have any fixings so it just clips in you've got this groove in the back there and that just clips around the torso part there you just put it in from underneath and just pull it upwards and that just clips in there but it, it's not really secured so I think the idea here is we would have the connects controller below it so it wouldn't be able to fall back down again but I'm not fitting the connects controller right now so I might just secure it in there with a couple of little bits of tape just to stop it from dropping down. So there's a little crude, but I've just put a couple of pieces of tape under there just to stop that from falling out for now. Uh, I don't want to glue it in or anything in case we need to remove it at some point. It's only temporary until we get the Connex controller in there. So I've been looking at these uh, main chest parts, the larger parts, and I've got a couple of problems that we need to solve. First one should be fairly easy. I've got some, this screw head in here is in the way. We need to use countersunk screws when we, when we build these shoulders, because that head, that screw head needs to be completely flush. So I'm gonna try and remove that and swap it out with a countersunk screw. Hopefully I've got one long enough. I think long-term I'll be fitting m3 bolts all the way through with a nut on this end recessed in the other end but for now i'm just using self-tapping screws so i'll try and replace that with a countersunk self-tapping screw the other problem we've got is they don't quite fit it sort of looks like like they do down in this corner here but when you actually push it flat back it, it won't go back because it's just catching in that corner so I think what we're going to have to do is just file a little section out of this area here, which is a shame because it'd be nice if they just went straight on, but they really don't fit. So what I've actually decided to do with these bits, and I don't know if this will be a mistake or not, but I'm actually going to glue them together because what I'm finding is they're actually quite a really nice fit. But once you put the screw in, they kind of move out of position and you end up with gaps. So I thought if I glue them in, then they can't move when I fit the screw. So I've left them to dry overnight, so they're now glued along the joint here. And I've fitted a number four by three eighth inch screw, which is just the right length, just protrudes through the other side very slightly. Um, which is 2.9 millimeters by 9.5 millimeters. So they're both done, both sides. I think the idea worked very well that when I put the screw in now, the, the joint doesn't move, it stays where I put it. So that's worked. The only thing is it's gonna be a little tricky because we now have to fit both of these parts on the robot at the same time. So we need to make sure that these three joints here, or the connectors, whatever you wanna call them, lugs, this one, this one, and that one, all need to be reasonably loose fitting so that we can just push this on in, in one piece. So I've managed to get them on. There's just one screw here really, that holds them in. They just push on and then one screw through here. I've used a half inch screw on here. So we've got half inch, three eighths of an inch, and one inch screws in there, which is 13 millimeters, 9.5 millimeters, and 25.4 millimeters in metric. Same on the other side, that's screwed in. Now it was, it was very tight, it's very tight in the middle here. I'm not super happy with the, the gaps around these parts, but I can't really see anything that I can do right now to improve that, so That'd be a challenge for another day to try and make that a bit better. This this should hold up higher once the connect is under it. It's a shame there wasn't a screw in there to screw that in. So the last bits to do are the um, top chest. So we need to get the um, attaching points fixed on first. So these attached pieces go in like this. Uh, they actually go in this large hole here and this smaller one over to the side See they just push in like that um, 
I had to do quite a bit of filing to get it to fit in there. It wasn't too bad, but yeah, it won't it won't just push in without any filing. So I'll I'll need to file this second one up. But I think what I'm going to do first is have a go at getting the top section on this side, see what that looks like. Right, well that's got those top pieces screwed in. I think he's uh, starting to look smart. I think the next thing to do is to have a look at the My Robot Lab software and see what we can do with this PIR sensor. It'd be nice if we can get the robot uh, reacting to people standing in front of it. So I've put a little script together so we can test out this PIR sensor. First thing I'm doing at the top here is just defining a function called NeoColor. It just takes a string argument and allows us to simply change the colour of the NeoPixels. Next we've got a function called PublishSense. This is actually an event listener that will get called when the PIR publishes its events. It will pass in a simple event argument which is actually a boolean and it will just be true or false. So if it's true we're going to print the words human detected and change the NeoPixel color to red by calling that function we saw above. And otherwise if it's false we're just simply going to call Neo color green change the NeoPixel back to green. So it's red when we detect something or green otherwise. Here I'm just starting a couple of Arduino services. I'm calling one of them Mega and one of them Nano. Next I'm starting the NeoPixel service. I'm attaching it to the Nano on pin 3. Now here I'm calling animation stop because I find that when I start the NeoPixel service it seems to be running an animation by default so I'm just explicitly telling it to stop doing that. And then I'm calling Neo color green just to start it off with a green color. Next I'm starting the PIR service. I'm attaching it to the Mega on pin 12. I'm defining this is verbose to true. I believe that just gives us a bit of extra logging, but we're not actually using that here. Then we call PIR enable, and that argument there, which is set to 1, is just how often we're going to poll the pin to see if it's changed. So we're just going to be polling it every one second. So basically every second. And finally, this is probably the most important part, we're, we're adding our event listener. Now there's three arguments here. The first argument is the name of the published event that we are subscribing to. Now that's defined in the PIR service and we can't change it. So we're going to be listening for the published sense event. The next argument is the name of the My Robot Lab service, which is going to have the listener for the event. And Python itself is actually a My Robot Lab service, so it's going to be Python that's going to be handling this. And then finally, the last argument is the name of the method that, the, that is the actual event listener, which is what we defined up further up in our script. So let's run that and see what that does. So if we wait for him to go green, and then if we get a little boy to walk in front of him, He detects him and turns red. Yeah. So yeah, so a very quick demonstration of what we can do with the PIR sensor. Basically, we can just listen for the events that it publishes and perform whatever action we want to perform when that happens. So I'll let George have the final word now. Uh, sorry guys, we're running out of battery, so... But we're still pleased with that robot. As usual, but not unusual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It's okay that if you dislike the video, and give us some good comments, and please subscribe to my channel and my dad's channel. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on my channel, and hopefully my dad will see the robot next time.